why is this even up for discussion? Azula is winning all day. Yeah, unfortunately, she only gets third place here. This is a stitch of a stitch because I don't have the ability to stitch. I'm going back to this original discussion of Fight to the Death who's coming out alive. And we have Toph, Korra, Azula, and Katara. Sorry, it's hidden there. So in this original video, the opinion was that Azula will win because the others are weaker. And that she just has that aura of, you know, fighting. So of course she wins. But Jonski here... Uh, responses that no, Katara and Azula will immediately be floored by Toph and that Korra will win in the end. John also um, mentions that the reason uh, Katara only ever won against Azula is because she has the advantage of having open water source. And I would also add, Azula did manage to be beaten because she also didn't have the mental capacity to fight that day because she was mentally unstable even Zuko himself said that there's something about her that day she was losing it and that's why he thought that he could defeat her that day so that isn't really a good enough reason to say why Katara is at level with Azula at that uh, that point even so there are lots of things uh, Jonski mentioned in the comments that I actually agree with like how people are defending Katara by saying that she can bloodbend but yeah what if that day it, the day of the fight was not under the full moon she will not have the advantage that she would have and then the comments saying that Korra is not as smart as the others so she will not defeat them and Jonski saying no she actually is smart because she can handle her own between Kavira and all of the other villains there and so what is my opinion about all of this I would say Azula is the winner. Okay, hear me out. So this is a fight to the death. A fight. It's not a battle. It's a fight. All four of them are fighting at the same time. Okay, keep that in mind. So if we follow Jonski's argument and every one of them gets the same amount of advantages that they already have, it will not be fair to judge them on who will win based on the ages in this picture because in these four pictures, they don't have the same amount of peak Power. Okay, so in this scenario that I will be cooking up, we will base it on Korra's age at the time she has mastered the Avatar state and all four elements. Okay, scenario. All four of them standing in one place. There's water around. There's earth around. There could even be metal around. Okay, so we have that. First thing Korra as a smart fighter would do is to incapacitate Toph who has the biggest advantage since there's so much ground there and that's her main thing so what she can do is to use her air bending to lift Toph in the air so she will not have her seismic sense she will not be able to see she will not know where the earth is thus getting her incapacitated the minute Korra does this Azula being the ruthless woman that she is would immediately kill Toph at that exact moment Korra even lifted her one inch from the ground. She's that... She's, she, she doesn't hesitate. She's that fast. Emotions and relationships um, included, since that's also part of their character, Katara will start to attack Azula for killing her friend. Even though technically she also they also have to kill each other, she will still have that part of loyalty in her to avenge Toph against Azula. And with that, since Azula is also the first one who killed someone, Korra will also have this obligation to avenge the first victim and go against Azula. Since we're talking fairness in this um, scenario, Azula will have the mental capacity to fight the same way she usually does without snapping, okay? So, back to the story. Story! Toph dies, Katara starts being her loyal self and starts uh, attacking Azula. The minute Katara starts hitting her with either icicles or water. Azula zooms in the air using her jet fire because Korra is not the only one who has advantage over uh, flight. So I would assume since Azula is a strategist, a strategist, she would try to fly near Korra while dodging both of their attacks. Why is it important that Azula is near Korra? Because in that scenario, Katara's attacks will hit both of them and also hitting Korra. And since there's no allies in this scenario, Korra and Azula will also have to defeat Katara at some point. Because yes, all four of them are smart, but 
Korra, Katara, and Toph are smart in a battle, except Azula is not just smart inside a battle, she is also a leader and she manages a lot of soldiers. Like she has a the she has the mental capacity to think like a general like a soldier to strategize war like she was the one who cooked up the idea of attacking everyone in sozin's comet like ozai didn't even think of that azula did that's how smart she is when it comes to war anyway back to the topic since uh katara is technically attacking both of them now or uh will start to realize that she also has to uh, kill both of them Azula will not do anything to attack Katara. Why is that? Because she will decide to wait for Korra to attack Katara. Though she might not be as powerful as Korra, she is smart enough in a war, in a battle, in a fight to use her surroundings to her advantage. And even though she doesn't have the Dai Li, she doesn't have her subjects, she doesn't have her army, she can use her enemies to her own advantage. Okay, so now in this scenario, Korra starts attacking Katara as well. Since they're both waterbenders, they have like a good match, you know. So Katara tries getting water out of midair. And let me just say that Hama did it as a demonstration. She just shows that it is possible. She doesn't show how strong that technique can be. So Katara at 18, master of water, would possibly get like a whole wave of water out of thin air like she, she can do that she there's a chance she can do that even so despite that katara uses water Korra tries to hit her with almost anything she can get but since Korra is also just as powerful and can use other elements the best way to incapacitate katara is to use water against her to lessen her control of the water she is holding Korra will use water to surround katara and kind of make her lose control of the own water she's controlling and at that moment just to slow down katara Korra will try to cage katara at that point with earth but at that moment of that brief pause azula will hit the water around katara with lightning so she's dead she dies from electrocution because Azula doesn't hesitate, she kills. So that's Katara gone. Okay, so now we have a one versus one between these two powerful people. Let me just note that in the actual series, Korra has not defeated a main villain as well because someone is always helping. But that doesn't mean she's not as powerful alone, you know? So Azula and Korra flying in midair, fighting each other, throwing everything that they've got. Korra decides to use it. She goes into the Avatar state. And let me tell you, the time she masters the avatar state, she also has learned that, you know, violence is not the answer. Okay, so Korra starts using the avatar state and is about to kill Azula, but then a brief moment, a really, really short pause of, wait, I shouldn't do this. But it only takes that one short moment for Azula to hit her with lightning and let me just note Azula did manage to unalive Aang because of that same brief moment of using the avatar state so Azula wins because of that and that's why you should take your meds folks